half in the bag. Well, Jay, after just watching uh, Hansel and Gretel and Jack the Giant Slayer, uh, let's talk a little bit about where movies come from. Mm. There's two types of movies. One is an original idea, and two is a ripoff of that idea. Oh, original ideas. I remember those. Yeah. It seems ages ago. Well, there's movies that come out, and we'll call them watershed movies. They're uh, usually movies that make a ton of money. Uh, they're usually an original idea, and... Um, and everyone wants to make a movie just like it. Some movies like this, for example, would be like Star Wars, Pulp Fiction, The Matrix, which, uh, which started off a craze of uh, hip action movies with bullet time and speed yeah. up, slow down kind of stuff. Uh, the Blair Witch Project, that's kind of started found footage movies, which is still going. A more recent example would be the Harry Potter movies. Uh, obviously, the first Harry Potter movie was a huge success and that was based on a series of books uh, aimed at young adults. They were sort of fantasy books. So that began the Hollywood orgy of what do we got? Uh, let's look for books that uh, young adults read that we could make Harry Potter-esque movies out of. Yeah, especially looking for ones that were already a series of books because then you can make more movies. Yeah, so one of the big ones that they started off with was the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is of course the C.S. Lewis novels, and I think there was a sequel called The Golden Compass, but there certainly were a lot of other Harry Potter knockoff movies. What might those be? Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Nanny McPhee. Aragon. Bridge to Terabithera. Inkheart. What? What? The Spiderwick Chronicles. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. What? So those are all good, clear-cut examples of movies that came out based on the success of Harry Potter. Can very easily be traced back to that movie. Yes. But now after a period of zombie movies and superhero movies, the current trend in Hollywood seems to be making darker versions of fairy tales and big dumb action movies based on classic literature or just on title recognition alone. Yeah. So Jay, where do all these goddamn fairy tale and action movies come from? Well, unlike Bridge to Terra Bithia and movies such as that, it's hard to pinpoint it back to one specific movie. It sort of yeah. seems to be a few different things that have inspired this, that have somehow uh, worked their way into uh, fairy tales. Uh, one of the examples would be something like Twilight, where you have uh, sort of a supernatural element, a monster horror element, so that lends itself well to certain fairy tale stuff. You have like Red Riding Hood with Amanda Seyfried uh, from the director of Twilight, Snow White and the Huntsman, which stars Kristen Stewart from Twilight. There's also the film Beastly, uh, which is Beauty and the Beast for the Twilight crowd, and there's also a new series on the CW called Beauty and the Beast, which is Beauty and the Beast for the Twilight crowd. But then we have another trend which kind of co-mingles with the other trend, and it's big dumb action movies based on classic literature or title recognition, which oftentimes includes fairy tales as well. Fairy tale stories that are done in an action movie style and don't necessarily have a teen romance inspired by Twilight. Right. Is everyone following along? Yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman would probably cross over into this category as well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, first up would be uh, Hansel and Gretel, of course. Um, not a romance movie, but a big, dumb, violent action movie uh, from a fairy tale. Uh, we also have Sherlock Holmes that came out recently, which is, uh, of course, based on uh, the stories of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but done in a gigantic, dumb Michael Bay action movie style. Well, and they also brought back Robin Hood again. Yes, but this time it was dark Robin Hood. Of course. There was lots of violence and dark moments in it. It wasn't the traditional Robin Hood and his merry men kind of fairy tale story. Um, it was uh, an action movie, a war movie, kind of. It was okay. very, very strange. Well, there's also uh, Alice in Wonderland, directed by Tim Burton, which inexplicably ends with a Lord of the Rings-style uh, battle sequence. You know why? Why? Because why not? Alice in Wonderland, the original ending was what, she woke up? Yeah. 
And coming out soon, we have Oz the Great and Powerful, which adds that element that I thought the original Wizard of Oz was missing, which is giant fight scenes. Yeah, if you look back at it now, the original Wizard of Oz is kind of boring. Um, it's just a lot of uh, music and story and adventure and great costumes and sets. I mean, yeah, it has all that crap, but it doesn't have a giant battle at the end. And really, that's what we need. We need a giant battle. I mean, the, the, the witch had her, her, look, flying monkeys, you know, and, and, and they, they came after them, but did they launch flaming rocks at them? Did, did they explode the, the, the Emerald City? Mm. Did the Emerald City blow up? No! So what's next, Jay? What fairy tale or story will they turn into a violent, erotic teen thriller or over-the-top action movie? Mm. What about uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears? How can Ooh. we make a violent, horror, teen erotic thriller, over-the-top action movie out of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Well, well, Goldilocks wouldn't be a little girl anymore. She would have to be a 20-something, a, a yeah. uh, played by Kristen Stewart, of course. Yeah. Um, they would say it's a brave performance by Kristen Stewart because she dyed her hair blonde. Mm. Uh, and, and she would, uh, the, the bears, you know, the, the, the too, too hot, uh, too cold, just right. Um, what would what would be the twist with that, Jay? The porridge thing would be that's so corny and, and kitty. They would just eliminate that altogether. There'd just be one line in the movie about porridge being too hot, and that okay. would be like the wink, wink. Yeah, in the beginning, like a, 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 before she left her house to go yeah. adventure in the woods. Um, and then the rest of the movie would just be about her fighting bears. It would be like The Gray with Liam Neeson, only with a twenty-year-old girl. She would she would go like this, and she'd have glass all over her hand, and she would go into the bear, and, he, and she'd go, "How's that?" Just right. Pinocchio, they haven't made a violent, scary Pinocchio yet. Would it be a romance? Would uh, a, a girl fall in love with Pinocchio? Hmm, I, I suppose she would get a kick out of his nose, Yeah. if you know what I'm saying. It would say the poster would be Pinocchio, and then she'd be like this, and he'd be like this, and, she, and then it would say, tell me lies. Well, of course, if they did Rip Van Winkle, it would have to be uh, Rip Van Winkle sleeps through the apocalypse. Mm. He wakes up and the world is in ruins. Yeah, a post-apocalyptic Rip Van Winkle film, mm. right. Well, what happened was uh, sleeping over that extended period of time, he missed like nuclear fallout that happened during the, the apocalypse. Okay. Uh, so he's developed these superpowers and, and ironically, one of them is that he can put his enemies to sleep. Yeah, yeah. M maybe he's also developed like an immunity. Mm. So in a way, He's like a, like Superman yeah. because everyone that's a, that survived the apocalypse are all kind of um, sickly from the radiation, or they're mutants, or they're falling apart. So then you'd have scenes where he would ha have to have a stocking cap on too. Oh yeah, he would be wearing his um, bed clothes or his uh, pajamas, and the the mutants would all be coming at him, and he'd go, <laughs> and the mutants would fly, and they. <laughs> break apart and it would look like a cartoon CGI piece of crap. I can't wait. It's sure to be an exciting film, Jay. I'll try not to sleep through it. They haven't done Humpty Dumpty yet. That's a good one. Yeah. The H Humpty Dumpty couldn't be an egg though. It's like the, the new Beauty and the Beast show. He's, he's not really a beast. He just kind of has a scar on his face. Humpty Dumpty would have to be like a soldier that has to guard this wall for some reason. Mm -hmm. he, he would be put under, he would be a very handsome young man played by Nicholas Holt. Um, and, and there would be a princess who walks by the wall every day and goes, hi, Humpty. Well, his name couldn't be Humpty Dumpty either. No. That's too ridiculous. The movie would have to be called The Wall. The wall would be uh, 10,000 feet high too. And oh. in this massive city bigger than any city you've seen in um, any of the Lord of the Rings films. The city would be so big, it would reach the clouds. Mm. The wall would be 10,000 feet high, and Humpty would have to fight off intruders, and there would be action scenes, and it would go <laughs> And Humpty would fight them, but he would be the, the bravest, strongest warrior in, in the kingdom. Mm. And, and he's the one that defends the fucking wall, right? right. And, and the, the evil queen sends thousands of her minions and Humpty can just fight them off one by one. And then to, to, to get into the castle, she puts the curse on him that makes him made of porcelain. Oh, yeah. And then, and then she goes, 
<gasps> you lose. Bing! And hits him and he falls off the wall. And then the second half of the movie is the princess's quest. She picks him up in all the pieces and she brings him along. Yeah. But we have to have the actor in the movie, so he, he appears in spiritual form oh, in, yeah. in her head mm -hmm. he, because that's part of the curse. Right. And they, have, uh, they make love in her mind. Oh. And it becomes erotic. It becomes an erotic thriller. And she has uh, an emotional attachment to the, the bag of glass. And then at the end, you know, she, she takes the, all the pieces of Humpty Dumpty to the sorcerer, uh, uh, who's a friend or an ally of the kingdom. And he goes, you cannot put him back together again. And that's, you know, that's one of the lines they put in the trailer. Oh, sure. You know, but the queen has a plan. It's to drain, drain the blood of the princess to, to awaken the, the blood moon curse. Mm. But uh, they have to put Humpty Dumpty back together. And they do, you know, at the end, of course. And, uh, and he, he's all cracked and everything. And then she goes, no! And he goes, Psh! And then he's back to being the, the most powerful warrior in the kingdom. And then 500,000 uh, monsters rush towards him. And he fights them all off one by one. Oh, wait, wait. I just got a Google alert. Yeah. Uh, according to IMDb, all those movies are already in production. You know what's weird, Jay? Jokes are now real. <laughs>